think virtual events are boring, draining, and a poor substitute for the real thing. And unfortunately, for many of today's events, you'd be right. What we often refer to as Zoom fatigue is actually just an excuse for poorly designed and facilitated Zoom gatherings that make audiences want to check out and drop off. But it doesn't have to be that way. What if people left your virtual event feeling energized, nourished, and part of a community? To take it one step further, what if connecting online could be just as good and in some ways even better than connecting in person? For the last 20 years, I've led interactive in-person events for tens of thousands of people around the world and trained people how to lead those kinds of events. Then when COVID-19 hit, my entire business model crumbled and I was forced to question my own assumptions. After a few weeks of mourning, I decided it would be far more exciting to prove myself wrong than to wait around for in-person to be possible again. So I shifted my mindset and I started asking, how can we take these two-dimensional technological platforms designed for information dissemination and leverage them as powerful vehicles for authentic human connection? I can tell you from experience now, leading virtual trainings and scaling intimacy with thousands of people that it is totally possible, as long as you're willing to do one thing, prioritize connection over content. Yes, I am asking you to scale back on content just a little bit. If your participants are coming only for content, they can watch the recording later at one and a half times the speed. If you want people to show up live, then one of the best incentives you can offer them is the opportunity to connect to other participants. At in-person events, these connections often happen by serendipity, like waiting in line for the restroom or the lunch line, or who you sit next to at the keynote. But online, we have to create opportunities for connection on purpose, or else we risk that it will not happen at all. And while we know that engaging our audience is critical, Connection is actually your most effective engagement strategy because then we're accountable to someone else and we're much less likely to be multitasking. So here are three connection strategies that you can use to shift your audience from being passive observers to being active participants and to create a culture of belonging in your virtual events. Our first strategy is to connect early because the beginning sets the tone for everything to come. You never have a second chance to make a first impression, so you want to make sure that connection is a priority right away. Imagine arriving at a virtual session. There is silence, a static slide with a countdown clock and the chat has been disabled. What impression would this give you? It would probably feel impersonal, informational, and unengaging. Now imagine arriving to a virtual session, to a gallery view, and a sea of friendly faces, including the facilitator. Each person is being greeted by name. There's upbeat instrumental music playing in the background and an opening prompt to answer in the chat. Like what's a quote that inspires you or what has been the highlight of your week? The facilitator launches a poll to find out what everyone is hoping to get out of the session. They invite you to change your screen name to something personal, like a nickname a place in nature that relaxes you, or your favorite movie. All of these small things add up to one big thing, a feeling of being welcomed and acknowledged as individuals and as a community, and that connection matters. Our second strategy is to connect often. So maybe you did connect early with an opening prompt or an icebreaker, so you think you can check it off your list. But as we know, relationships and community take time to build. So it's important that connection is a thread that's woven throughout your event with a number of touch points. These touch points don't have to be long, but you do want them to happen often. Ideal times for connection are in the beginning, as we've discussed, after a break or a meal, right before you close, and anytime you feel the energy beginning to dip. Now, oftentimes we get stuck in a false dichotomy, thinking we have to choose between connection and content, but you can absolutely have both. My favorite way to do this is with a debrief after a presentation, a panel, or a speaker. And in the debrief, you are combining connection and content by posing a question for participants to discuss that helps them integrate and reflect on what they just learned or experienced. 
Our third strategy is to gradually increase vulnerability. We want people to open, not close. So we have to ease them into a state of vulnerability rather than asking them about the most embarrassing moment of their lives in the first five minutes of our session. So some of you may be familiar with the famous article, the 36 questions that will make you fall in love with anyone. That was actually based on a research study about platonic relationships. The main thing the researchers found about establishing a relationship among peers is that it has to be sustained, escalating, reciprocal, personal self-disclosure. So let's break that down. Sustained, connecting often. Escalating, gradually increasing. Reciprocal, everyone is doing it, it's not one-sided. And it's personal self-disclosure. So you're revealing something about your humanity beyond your title, your role, or your status. My favorite activity for practicing gradually increase vulnerability is a classic one called, if you really knew me, you'd know. And in this activity, you get people together in pairs or trios and have them finish that sentence stem multiple times. If I were to answer that sentence stem right now, it would be something like, if you really knew me, you'd know that I'm eight months pregnant and a first time mom to be. If you really knew me, you'd know being pregnant in a pandemic has been pretty isolating and sometimes really sad. If you really knew me, you'd know that it's been an arduous five-year fertility journey to even get here and that it took me a while to trust that it was really happening this time. So notice your feelings of connection to me right now. What are the emotions, the thoughts, the associations or the memories that come up for you. And imagine now that it's your turn. What would you be inspired to share? So that feeling of connection that you're maybe having right now is just the tip of the iceberg of what's possible with virtual events. If you apply the three strategies, connect early, connect often and gradually increase vulnerability, you will be well on your way to leading life-changing events in any medium. As participants, it's time that we demand that these sit and listen paradigms change so that prioritizing human connection becomes the new norm. As the world goes virtual, it's what we need now more than ever.